interesting is the idea of kind of making data-driven decisions. And I'll give you an example, Jason. Historically, when companies do 360 reviews, 90-day review, we're not in the belief that management should force down a tool down their organization with a lot of pushback. If you allow employees to have buy-in, to make it a seamless part of their workday, Welcome to another episode of the Staffing Room Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Lawson. I'm super excited for today's episode. Our guest today is Sam Nafisi. Sam is a serial entrepreneur with a strong passion for the disruptive technology, and particularly where he can transform industries through innovation. Sam has been with ProDesco for four years, initially serving as board member before stepping into the role of CEO. Uh, prior to protest, Sam was the chairman and CEO of DTIQ, formerly DTT, where he led it to acquisition by Cisco, and it later became a leading provider of digital business innovation solutions and software for restaurants, convenience stores, and retailers. So incredible depth of experience and uh, taking the helm of protest school, I think, is, you know, is going to deliver incredible insights and results for their customers. So welcome, Sam. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Good morning to you. We are going to, in the spirit of the staffing room, we jump in the ring and we start, you know, gloves up, hands up, and, and we go straight into the, uh, into the challenges. You know, who's the enemy? Who, who's the opposition for staffing companies? And, and what are the challenges in the market? So first question you know, speaking to, you know, staffing agencies, prospects, customers, what are you seeing as kind of the market forces that they should really be aware of in today's environment? It's a, it's a good question, Jason. And I come from a perspective of being a supplier. I'm a CEO of a supplier to the staffing agency. So my breadth and scope of, of understanding the, the space and this vertical is from that perspective. So what would, the fortunate thing is we do have a lot of data around employee engagement, employee analytics. And I'd say the two or three areas that we see kind of flags, one is clearly the, the burnout area and employee engagement. That's one area that we're seeing, um, you know, they're being overworked potentially and the, the staffing has been reduced. So I think that's part of the, the issue, uh, you know, there was, there was a, survey I saw that I think it was 60 or 65 percent of employees said they, they feel overworked and that leads directly to a decrease in productivity that we've seen and certainly higher turnover so that's a big area I think another area where I speak to CEOs that are running staffing firms is about mental health and when they are overworked and overwhelmed does it lead to a mental health issue how do we address that how do we provide them some flexibility at work to relieve the burdens that overwork potentially could bring. And the third area that's more broad, not necessarily staffing related, but broadly, is economic uncertainty. I think there are a lot of unknowns in the economy, potentially a slowdown. We saw the job numbers last week. So I think that's an, an area that all of us are thinking about what the next 12, 18 months look like. Yeah, it certainly is, no doubt, a, a very challenging environment. And, and I think, you know, a lot of agency leaders are very aware of that and cognizant of, um, you know, staff turnover, recruiter, mental health. And, and certainly it's been a big change from, you know, 2021, 2022. When, when you think about those those challenges, what, where, do, where do you see kind of the, the risks for agency leaders to kind of not be fully aware of how to manage or how to really see the signals or have the data to help them kind of manage and, and support their, their teams? Yeah, I think that's what tools like ProtoScore come into play by us being able to highlight, for example, what I gave as an example in question number one regarding employee burnout, employee engagement. Our tool provides real-time analytics around that. And being able to show management 
what employees are potentially burning out and are overburdened and over overworked, what can we do? Because the prolonged impact of being overworked and overwhelmed permeates through the organization. It's not just that one individual who's feeling overworked. It permeates to their colleagues and most importantly, permeates to client relationships, engagement with the clients, and being an efficient party to them, counterparting to them. So I think that those are really critical issues of addressing it earlier, not leading to attrition. One of the things that all of us are trying to do is retain our quality talent. And you don't want them to be burning out and attriting when we're all scrambling to keep the quality talent we already have. Right, and and you know the the benefit of having a tool like ProdeScore is, like you've you've just mentioned, you're having those early signals to make informed decisions and actually take kind of some proactive measures. Yeah, you know, given yeah. I'm just curious, given that you know even some of the better or best recruiters at the moment are struggling to get the placements and the fees and in the and the, the business. How how do you see or feel that some of these may be um, a little bit, you know, wanting to kind of protect themselves and not be kind of too much in, in the in the eye of the data or eye of the analysis in terms of their performance and you know, so, so yeah, so some of the performance is actually externalities. You know, the market is tough; it's not their actual um, individual performance per se. So how how are you how you do you think about uh, leaders, you know, balancing those things out. Look, it, it's historically been a very data-driven vertical. The staffing agency is very metricized, and we are adding a a higher level of a data analytics, overarching all of the cloud tools they currently use. So they use email, telephony, chat, Slack an applicant tracking system at ATS. So we're, they're already capturing all these data points for their staff. All we're doing is we're capturing the data, we're putting it in a real-time dashboard using AI, machine learning, large language models to provide next indicated action. So in the example of the overworked employee that may be burning out, we can be a leading indicator and far before they quit in 90 days because they're burning out, give the manager or the executive suite a, a flag. Hey, Sam seems burnt out. Give him a couple days off. Have a conversation with him. Bring some help to Sam. Maybe you could bring another person who could help him. That way you alleviate the inevitable burnout or potential attrition by using a leading indicator like Chronoscore. Yeah, and, and and that's a great segue into round two, uh, which is the strategies and tactics to win, and even in you know, a challenging market. And and we're recording this in the middle of twenty twenty four. You know, most sectors are challenging. Um, you know, there's no doubt that many agencies will flourish in the coming six or twelve months. I think you know, for for many, they are thinking about you know what are the right tools, what are the right approaches. Are you seeing kind of any um, more unconventional ways to use the data or the insights, or um, what? What are some of the best practices for for agency leaders to really, um, you know, make sure they're seeing the right platform of you know people, process, and technologies? Right. So look, I'll I'll talk about two things here that one of them just got triggered in my mind. But uh, what again? I'm a big believer, and I think a lot of the C-suite in staffing is the idea of kind of making data-driven decisions. And I'll give you an example, Jason. Historically, when companies do 360 reviews, 90-day review, semi-annual, annual reviews, they've always been very subjective. If I, if I like the person I'm talking to, if I had a dinner with them last night, they get a five, they get a promotion, they get a raise. What we're trying to do, and a tool like ProScore, is makes that review very objective. So it makes that decision of the raise, the promotion, or the bonus directly correlated with data. So I think that's an area that tools could be used 
where historically they've been mostly subjective, bring it on to a more objective uh, format. The second one was just triggered in me when I said, as you were asking the question, is around AI and automation. And I think it's such a buzzword right now, AI. And two parts of AI that are critical. One is AI does not function or does not work with any efficacy if you don't have a large swath of data. We're fortunate to capture an enormous, enormous amount of data that makes us subject matter experts within our niche category of staff. So we know the industry well, and I say this to management all the time, you know, use AI as an adjunct to help your employees not necessarily to replace them. You could handle a lot of things in AI, but if it's used conjunctively with your staff, make their roles easier, let them perform better. When they do, there's less stress on them and potentially better outcomes for the company. Yeah, I think it's that, it's that complementary, you know, human yeah. and, and machine is where, yeah, I certainly... You know, the adage at the moment is, you know, AI is not going to replace your role. It's another person who uses and leverages AI um, and automation because I think automation is one of the initial steps a lot of agencies can take with AI. And and also, you know, tools like Ringover where, and, you know, curious with ProtoScore too is, is you know, the adoption and engagement and, and the suite that staffing agencies do provide their recruiters I think again, those that those recruiters that really do embrace and use the technology, you know, in their role on a day to day basis, whether it's business development, whether it's um, you know, working with the ATS and making sure it's rich of, of data, um, can actually then it's that it's a loop of of insights that then can help them in the, in their own role and perform performance right and and yeah you know, as we kind of talk about ai and and it's you know certainly again a hot topic um yeah there's there, there is a massive challenge for agency leaders to both embrace the power of the technology but also maintain kind of like a unique and valuable service to clients right if if every agency is bringing on you know a subset of ai tools they may all start to kind of look and feel the same from a client perspective. So how, how do you think agency leaders should kind of embrace the technology, data-driven, but also, you know, be able to stand out when they're talking to candidates and clients? Yeah, look, we, I was personally talking to a, a staffing CEO uh, this week, earlier this week, and she mentioned that they're looking to implement AI tools to streamline initial candidate assessments. So that kind of facilitates that onboarding and maintaining that personal interaction with the employee, but you use AI as an adjunct tool to help that process and streamline it. That was really interesting to me. You know, it was, it was a novel approach and I like, wow, that if they could work that collaboratively, use AI for the initial candidate assessment while having their staff take the next steps it's an interesting win-win for both parties. Right, yes. Yeah. So it's, it's really allowing the recruiters to spend more time on the high-value, sort of high-touch parts of their job and help kind of automate and, and um, build AI around some of the more administrative parts of the role, uh, which, again, is another seg great segue into round three where we kind of delve more deep into the product innovations and specifically around kind of the marketplace around the ATS CRMs that, you know, both ProtoScore and Ringover, you know, work very closely with. Um, in terms of, you know, I do hear and see a lot of staffing agencies and certainly, you know, certainly through 2021, 20, 2022, they did bring on a lot of new technology and some of it was not well adopted. Um, some of it, you know, didn't integrate well into their existing kind of technology stack. How how do you see clients, you know, taking on produce and, and you know, thinking about the overall technology environment to help, you know, whether it be data lake, data warehouse, how are you thinking about 
the best ways that they embrace and onboard technologies like like Proteus? Yeah, look, Jason, I think that's a really important question. And for us at ProtoScore, and I hope it's broadly broadly defined by others, is really being employee centric. So we're not in the belief that management should force down a tool down their organization with a lot of pushback. If you allow employees to have buy-in, to make it a seamless part of their workday, then not only do you have tool adoption, because the company is spending money on these tools, make sure the employees are in it and enjoying the benefits it gets out. So for example, in ProtoScore, I can speak definitively about, we are very employee centric. And by that, by that I mean is we provide amongst cohorts and peers for you to see how your colleagues are doing. How are they functioning? Hey, Sam is a good, good provide performer, but Jason's a great performer. How do we replicate Jason? How could Sam get closer to performing as well as Jason? And we provide analytics around that to allow me, Sam, in this example, to be motivated and look up to a possible growth in approaching Jason. So I think that's an example of how ProtoScore uses its tool to be very employee-fed friendly, very employee-centric, and allow that kind of growth uh, for colleagues. Yeah, and it also triggers kind of a thought too in terms of we, we've spoken about you know recruiter retention, the churn, which is you know naturally pretty high in this industry. Um, I think there's also a great opportunity for you know, agency leaders to think about the employer branding to attract new recruiters, right? You know, there's always going to be that top quartile or top 10% yeah. or top 1% of recruiters that as an agency leader, you, you want to attract to your team. So, you know, I, I'm thinking about having a great tool set like, and particularly something like ProtoScore, which is going to help high achievers achieve it even more. Um, you know, it is, it is a role that is, you know, very much a revenue, you know, higher in, income earning uh, potential role. So, you know, have, have you kind of, how, how do you think, you know, agency leaders could think more about attracting new talent into their team, um, you know, through promoting actually the strong tool set and the, and the, the whole mindset of the business? No, that's like it's. Uh, I look at attracting new talent, almost in the same light of retaining great talent. They go hand in hand, and one of the things we do is, and it's really important because when you have potential attrition or a reduction in force in organizations, we have a part of our uh, of Proto Score is an area around O and A, organizational network analysis. And CEOs and managers have very little visibility into the connectivity of their staff. So how important is this colleague to the organization? If he's being let go or he's burnt out and tired or he's underperforming, just to see the connectivity. So our o a models by our uh, data science team analyze all of the connections between every employee in the organization. And will tell you if something, what if one employee or multiple employees were lost between attrition, they got terminated, they quit, they're burnt out, whatever the scenario, and the impact on the company. A lot of decisions are made in the C suite without knowing the ripple effect in the organization. And that's really critical for us to know what cog in the wheel are we letting potentially attrit, how important they are. Besides their revenue, everybody just looks at performance solely on revenue. But what about the impact on the organization beyond revenue? So I think that area is a very important area to, to focus on knowing the importance, connectivity, and kind of just the glue that holds, holds the organization together. Yeah, I think that's, that's a remarkable you know, case study of, of applying the you know, tool set and and data and insights and yeah I, yeah certainly whether that's um you know understanding how that kind of complementary team 
works and, and would would struggle without a, a certain individual, but also how they might benefit from having somebody else come into the team that can really help, you know, bolster, um, and particularly those agencies that are moved away from a 360 degree model where they've got, you know, the business development team and then the, the kind of sourcing team, how do, how, do, how do they kind of, you know, collaborate between, you know, the different part, parts of the kind of client and candidate journey? Exactly. And Jason, remember one important thing, the idea of hybrid or remote. That's a whole other area we focus on of knowing productivity agnostic of geography. And we, can, we have definitive numbers and analytics around how you perform in office, how you perform hybrid, how you perform remote. Yeah, and, and, and that that is, you know, worth, it's wasting gold, isn't it, in terms of having those insights and, and doing it in a way that's, that's not a big brother. It's very much a, we're, we're working out what's going to be working, what's the optimal mix for the team, for individuals. Um, and so uh, certainly something I'd recommend, um, you know, the audience taking a look into project score and, and particularly around that hybrid remote um, support. I think it's, it's, it's a brilliant, you know, feature and benefit of, of project score. As we look forward, you know, in terms of innovation, um, I, this could either be, you know, project kind of product roadmap or what, what are you seeing? in terms of the overall marketplace, um, other technologies or integrations. Um, yeah, we, what, what's kind of exciting for you in terms of what, what the next kind of six or 12 months will bring? Yeah, look, I, I touched on it very briefly earlier, uh, but for us, it's all around large language models and AI in providing our staffing clients indicated actions, next actionable steps. And we know we're not you we're not going to be experts in twenty different verticals, but we're going to we are and are learning and are kind of getting becoming subject matter experts in staffing. Our data is so rich with staffing information that our language models can provide this industry with really really well founded, thoughtful, next indicated actions. Again, as an example. What is Jason doing that he's doing so well? How can we replicate Jason? Look, one of the big struggles of management has always been, how do I replicate good employees? We now can provide directed, indicated actions of how Sam can improve to get closer to Jason. And that is a hugely valuable tool that I think in the next quarter, we're probably going to launch this around October. It'll be game changing for the industry. Yeah, I, I can I can see that already in terms of you know what your what the product offers today, but also as you describe you know what's coming. I think it's it's creating that repeatable, scalable, successful process and um, approach to to recruiting, which you know I think gone are the days where you know. The inbound of of roles and and the supply demand, you know, that's that's a fair wave to uh, to coming back. So I think having a much more repeatable, you know, and and um, best best in class kind of me method um, is going to help agencies uh, tremendously. So yeah, uh, fantastic, right. Sam, we are into round four, speedball. So we've got some quick fire Q and A to um, you know to keep us warmed up here. So here we go. Number one, what would be your walk on music theme song if if you were to enter the ring as you're entering the staffing ring today? Oh, and that's funny. I, I'm an immigrant, so it's been a it's been a song that I value. Eye of the Tiger. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Probably one of the best, um, yeah, songs. Just it brings so much emotion, doesn't it? In terms of just yeah. the energy it's and a, the... it's a motivating song. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Best movie then, Fight Club or Rocky? Oh wow, well, it has to be Rocky because that was the song. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, red or blue corner? 
Red corner. Red corner. Okay. Beach or snow? Oh, beach for sure. I took my kids skiing a couple of times. We stopped years ago. Beach. Okay. I'm with you. I'd, I'd take to the beach any day. Yeah. Uh, cop- <laughs> coffee or tea? I grew up with tea, but currently coffee. Right. Nice. Salsa or guacamole? Oh, a little hot salsa on top of the guacamole. All right. There we go. So salsa and guacamole. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are, are you a texter or caller? Depending on who, my kids text. Good luck if they pick up my call. Right. I professionally call. Yeah. No, nothing beats a phone call. Yeah, for sure. Um, virtual or in real life? How, how, are you, how are you playing that today? In real life. I like tactile. I like seeing people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, be- best or breed. This is around software. So, best or breed or all in one. I, I think often you know the industries shift from one to the other. How, how are you seeing that at the moment? Best of breed. Rustic or modern? Rustic. Rustic. Ebooks or physical books? All oh, physical books. All right. I'm old school. I'm 52. I think I think we're on the same page for many of these. Uh, interesting. Yeah, and, and then we've just got a few Q&A just to kind of expand on some of these questions. So, yeah, thinking again about Project Score and your, and your you know, amazing history of, of leadership, I guess maybe going back a few years, what, what's what one of the best pieces of advice that you were given – um, that's really helped you in your, in your career. I say this often, Jason, but mistakes versus regrets. Mistakes wow. are okay. I welcome them, do them, but don't have regrets. And the, that, the defining distinction between the two is regrets are indecision. You're at a fork in the road. You're indecisive and incapable of making a decision. Horrible. Make a decision, even if it's a mistake, learn from it and move on. Yeah, that's that's a big one. Um, yeah, nothing more I can add to that. That's, that's um, yeah, definitely one for the books. Um, speaking of books, do you have, do you have a book you would um, recommend, a classic or one that you're reading recently? Yeah, it's not a classic, but I've, I've just been reading in the last month or so Anthony Bourdain's Kitchen Confidential. I, I've gone into cooking his cooking shows, so I picked up his book. Yeah, okay. Sounds sounds amazing. I've I've not uh not had a chance to read that, but um yeah, certainly take note. Um I, I love I love cooking and travel, so I think yeah, they still that's why I do it. For, exactly. Um and a podcast. Are you, are you a podcast listener? I certainly listen to All In. So, uh, Chamath and Jason Galaganis and those guys, it's a great podcast. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a top one on my, on my playlist as well. All In. Uh, I'll drop, the, drop it in the show notes for those that have not come across that. But certainly, yeah, totally agree. Highly recommend. Um, and any, any new or favorite app that you're kind of, Always oh on God. or often on? Yeah, I, I got I forgot the name of the app, I'll tell you right now, but I got a Father's Day gift of this scale. So I've got into health and being careful with my diet. So my kids gave me a scale that's connected to this app called VE Sync. It's and you stand on the scale and not only does it give your weight, but your body mass index, fat level, your heart rate. It's got 40 different things. And I do it in the mornings and at night, and it has graph and charts. It's pretty crazy. It's a little too much, clearly, but I've got into it in the last couple of months. Yeah. No, I think, um, again, you know, technology can can be a, a wonder in terms of 
both work and and personal i think you know have friends with you know the the whoop device and and other wearables and scales i think yeah that's uh again it's it's all about being aware you know I'm sure if I stepped on your scales, probably there were, all the numbers wouldn't be in the right direction, but at least okay. I'd be aware and be able to understand, okay, I, I need to take need to take some better care of, um, you know, my step count or whatever it might be. So, uh, yeah, that's a fantastic one. Um, right, we are, we are cooling down. We're wrapping up. A uh, couple of, you know, final questions. Just thinking about the conversation we've had today, Sam, what, what, I guess what would be your kind of two or three key takeaways in terms of, you know, what we've spoken about today? Look, I think we all as leaders should put employee health and wellness at the forefront and look at that because I think if we care for them and their wellness, it'll permeate through the organization our revenues will increase, our retention rates will improve, our customers will be happier. I think making employee-centric decisions is really, really important. You know, using technology, as we talked about, AI, all that stuff, using it judiciously, using it collaboratively versus in replacing of, but using it with the co cohorts of employees. I think those are important. I think also making some generational assessments, right? different mm. employees at different thresholds of age and where they are in their lives, what different things, you know, maybe the Gen X wants Fridays off. Maybe someone my age doesn't mind working on Fridays, but they want to take Monday afternoons off because they want to go to their kids' volleyball games. Seeing those things and being an employee centric manager in all industries, I think could be well-founded for all of us. Absolutely, absolutely. And and just a follow up question then, you know, really to resonate so highly and I'm sure will with with our audience. So, you know, as an agency leader, you know, busy job, a lot of stress, um and, you know, I'm sure most or all will be, you know, nodding their heads right now as as you talk about that. What what would be what would be one thing that you, you would suggest that they do or, or think about how, you know, approach to actually buy themselves some time to put something in, in action or, you know, yeah, do, is this something that comes to mind? I, I'm smiling as you're asking the question because it's something I struggled with for a long time running this business. But I will tell any of my friends, colleagues, managers, CEOs, give your team part of or all of Friday off. No one works on Fridays, folks. I was so reluctant until I saw the enormity of data in all industries. If you can, take advantage of that opportunity to give time for your employees to take Fridays either partially or holistically off. Wow. Well, that's that's certainly a, a big takeaway, and and certainly, yeah, I've seen a lot of businesses where Friday is, you know, so unproductive, and and you know, I think also just giving people the choice, right? If if they know they've got a deadline or know they've got some things that they haven't quite got to through the week that's been busy, if they want to spend their Friday or their Friday morning to really just delve into that and and complete that piece of work. Um, just gives people more the freedom and, and, you know, probably, and what you're saying there too is where people are, might be working, there's no kind of set meetings. So they've actually got some time to actually do some work as well. Exactly. Uh, exactly. So, uh, no, that's, that's, that's brilliant. And feels like we've really got to the pinnacle of, of, you know, a lot of what we've discussed today in terms of, you know, really taking action and being really mindful, um, and also just being led by insights as you've just done to actually, you know, make some, sometimes some, you know, tough decisions um, that might go against, you know, previous kind of My own, thinking of what. Geez, I was instinctively like, what are you talking about? We're working five days a week. Well, what? But 
as the data came in and I saw the reality of what was happening within our own company and then systemically broadly, I realized it's the right move. But by the way, that's the benefit that the mental health stuff that I was telling you about. If you are to give them half of Friday off, Friday, we finish at noon local time, whatever time zone you're in, that's a huge benefit. And all I ask of you is if you're a little busier on a Tuesday, give me a half hour more. You know, be Fine. flexible in that regard. If you've got a kid's baseball game, go watch your kid play. You, it becomes rewarding both bilaterally, both to the company and the employee. Hundred percent, and and people feel more accountable to you know both as well. You know, both their own well being, and and understanding they've been treated as adults, and and they will repay that. Um, yeah. And, and their good work. So, Sam, th this is this has been incredible, actually. Um, yeah, we've had you know, a lot of super interesting, you know, thoughts about staffing, but also more broadly about people. Which, you know, at the end of the day, staffing industry is very much a people-centric business, and I think it's that holistic and mindful approach that, you know, a lot of leaders are, you know, thinking about how to kind of adopt more and more. So. Really appreciate your time. Um, thank you so much for being a guest on the Staffing Room podcast. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you here, and, and I'm sure our audience have have gained a massive amount of you know, benefit and, and understanding of produce and how you are leading the business. Um, well, I appreciate having me, Jason. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. I actually really enjoyed this, so thank you. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you again. Right, everyone, that's a wrap. Uh, thank you again for listening to the Starting Podcast and we look forward to joining you for another episode.